Now, how are we going to win? How are we going to know the victory? How do we get beyond our doubts? How do we rise above our, our sins? How do we supersede our indifferences? How do we attain the level of spiritual life that God calls us to? How do we walk worthy of a high calling, a heavenly calling? How do we defeat Satan? How do we get the victory? Well, the Bible gives us solutions. In fact, the New Testament gives us several key answers. And I want to run these by you. This is a little mini theology of how a believer deals with Satan. And by the way, this is what the Bible teaches as the way you deal with Satan in your own life. And this is as far as it goes. There are people today who want to advocate exorcisms and certain rituals, and they have certain formulas for dealing with Satan. But this is what the scripture said. I'm going to give you about five or six principles. We're going to run right through them and give you a little sequence. Number one, first, in order to know victory over Satan, we must recognize that Christ has already dealt a defeating blow to Satan. Realize that Christ has already defeated him. In 1 John 3, 8, it says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. In Hebrews 2.14, it says he came to destroy him who had the power of death, to whom we were all our lifetime subject to bondage. So know this, beloved, that the Lord has already dealt a defeating blow. Second thing, the New Testament says, recognize that the power that dealt that blow resides in you. The power that defeated Satan is dwelling in you. In 1 John 4, it says in verse 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When a believer is saved, he receives the Spirit of God. Implanted in him is the power that defeated Satan. The resource, the reservoir is there. Third thing, 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9, say this, be sober. That means know your priorities. Be committed. Be vigilant. Watch. Because your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in faith. Now notice, principle number one, recognize that Christ has already dealt a death-defeating blow to Satan. Principle number two, recognize that that Satan-defeating power indwells you by the Spirit of God. That's your resource. Number three, resist Satan. Resist him. And you can because you have that available power. Now you say, well, John, how do you resist him? As Peter says, well, let's look at Ephesians 4.27. That'll give us another concept. Ephesians 4.27 tells us how we resist Satan expressing his power in our lives. Ephesians 4.27 simply says this, neither give a place to the devil. Just don't ever give him a place. It's pretty simple. Don't give him a place. Now, the implication of the verse is that if he has a place, it's because you gave it to him, right? So that your will is the key. Now, no, let's go back again. Start out by recognizing that the death blow has already been dealt. Then move on, secondly, to the fact that the death-dealing power is resident in you. Be alert, then, to resist his efforts. What does that mean? It means give no place to Satan in your life. You say, all right, how do I keep from doing that? How do I keep from giving no place to him? How do I keep from, as 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, giving him an advantage? The answer is this, 2 Corinthians 2.11, be not ignorant of his devices. All right, you want to not give him a place? Then be aware of where he's coming from. Bar the door, close the window. Bolt the locks. Make sure you are not ignorant of his devices. You say, well, what are his devices? 
First John says this, for all, that's right, the word all, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of God, but is of the world. How does Satan come to you? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's his device. So if you're not ignorant there, you bar the door at the lust of the eyes, you bar the door at the lust of the flesh, you bar the door at the pride of life, you will give no place to Satan. Having given no place to Satan, you will resist his entry into your life. There's another thing. If you're not gonna give a place to the devil, that means you have to be aware of his devices. You can't be ignorant. And secondly, when you see him coming, flee. Second Timothy 2.22 says flee youthful lusts, flee temptation, and follow after righteousness, it said. Now, that's a pretty simple formula, people. Let me say it again so you'll get it. Realize the death-dealing blow has already been dealt by the power of Christ. Realize that power resides in your life. Therefore, resist the devil, which means give no place in your life to him. You do that, number one, by not being ignorant of his devices, and two, when they come, by fleeing from them. You say, well, John, how do you, how do you get yourself oriented to do this? That's 2 Corinthians 10.3. 2 Corinthians 10.3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. What Paul is saying is we are human beings, but our battle is not a human battle. We are physical creatures, but our battle is not a physical battle. Verse 4 of 2 Corinthians 10, for the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly. No, we're not fighting a human battle. Men are not really the enemy. The battle is not really on a human level, a fleshly level. Our weapons are not simply fleshly, but are mighty through God. In other words, we have a spiritual warfare demanding spiritual weapons. Now, how are we going to use these weapons? How are we going to know we can, we can be aware of his devices and that we can flee his temptations and we can resist his onslaughts and we can be sure to give no place to him in our lives? How are we going to appropriate the power? The end of verse 5 simply says, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now listen, that's the final note in our little brief theology. In order for us to know Christ has dealt a death blow to Satan, in order for us to know that that same power resides in us, in order for us to resist Satan, to give no place to his entry, to not be ignorant of his devices, to flee his temptations, we must have every thought brought into captivity to Christ. In other words, we must have our mind controlled by the Word of God through the power of the Spirit of God. There are no shortcuts, beloved, to effective, victorious Christian living. If you're gonna live a victorious Christian life, it means you must have a mind given over to the Word of God so that your thinking and your feeling is controlled by that very truth.